Hey Key, let's react to this video. How to eat clean without breaking the bank. And there's another question I want to ask you because I heard about this drug that I hear a lot of people are using and it's super expensive. And I'm seeing people who don't have the money or finding the money for that. And I, I want to talk about that because it's, it's becoming popular. But your lifestyle, can you do it on a budget? Like, can you eat your way and it not be expensive? If you don't eat junk food, see, if you go out and buy the vegan ice cream, which is like $12, and then you go out and buy whatever the burger is yeah. that's a vegan burger, yeah. again, expensive. Now, if you're eating, you know, let's say a meal for me will be chickpeas and quinoa, okay? That's a meal, bro? No, 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 I'm not finished. Hold up. First of all, there's nothing wrong with that. Like... American culture, and I, I love to be an American personally, but American culture has normalized it. So the fact that overconsumption is expected in all areas of life, food, finances, you know, career ladder, everything, chickpeas and quinoa should be a normal meal. You should not be like overeating. Like, bro, I don't, that's a meal. Like, this is the problem when, when niggas just, go for like they go for overconsumption so what i'm saying is is we need to move forward and eat healthier and eat less oh yeah. <laughs> chickpeas quinoa a salad and my salad's got a lot in it okay so i got arugula in there i got you know but no dressing no, I use dressing, but I make my own dressing. Oh. So I may I may make a dressing with some tahini, okay. a little bit of agave, okay. add in some, um, you know, like some peppers. Now I got a dressing. Yes, sir. Add in a little bit of oil, boom, that's my dressing. So I make my own dressing. Okay. Because most dressing have, have a lot of sugar. That's true. You see what I'm saying? If you look on the side, you'll see it's a lot of sugar and a lot of unhealthy fat like canola oil. I've seen canola oil. See what I'm saying? So, like, I don't want that inflammatory oil okay. in my diet. So, I, I, I make my own dressing. So, I got a salad there. Okay. I may take some mushrooms, like some lion's mane mushrooms. Yeah. Which, when you cook those, they're more like a steak. Wow. Um, or I may take some oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Which, when you cook those, they're more like chicken. Yeah. And so, like, people always ask me, like, well, Wait, some what mushrooms? They're more like, um, or I may take some oyster mushrooms, yeah. which when you cook those, they're more like chicken. Yeah. And so, like, people always ask me, like, well, if you if you eat plant based, why do you need to eat things that sound like, you know, stuff I eat? Yeah. It's no, it's good. all about texture. <laughs> and then most importantly, it's all about health. Yes, sir. Because the thing about mushrooms is that they're healthy for our bodies okay as opposed to eating something that potentially has hormones in it yeah that's been fed genetically modified soy and corn which is not supposed to eat in the first place you know and as a result it's been sitting in this freezer for two or three years we don't know how long so my thing is like i try to incorporate everything i need on that plate i got some quinoa i got some chickpeas i got a salad i got some mushrooms on there i'm good to go so that's not expensive when i hear you say all this stuff if you buy it in bulk, because i mean you you're not eating it every single day but you probably eat that once or twice a week though right? so i buy a 25 pound bag of quinoa okay i buy the same either 25 or 50 pop 50 uh pound bag of chickpeas yeah that's gonna last me a while. That 25 pound bag will probably cost me a hundred dollars, but it'll last me probably a year or uh, half a year. So I think it's important for people to understand that, yes, when you're going to the supermarket and buying products, it's going to be expensive. But when you're buying your food fresh, it's a totally different budget. I'll be real. I don't know if I can get to Dr. Bob's level, but I I got to I got to get I got to get close to it. Yes, yeah, and it really what it is is I say add before you subtract. Okay. And what that means is start to add in healthy food before subtracting the yeah, because for a lot of people it's like having a funeral every time they take away a food that they love. Yes. And so that could be that could be frustrating. Oh, it was frustrating. That could be you have to take it all away on your on your cleanse. Yeah, so like that's the thing. And so what you do is 
you have to add before you subtract. Yes, sir. I like that. And then what you do is, as you're adding all of these healthy foods and you find some healthy replacements, yes, sir. now you start to think to yourself, well, this is not bad. This is not bad. This, what's the difference between the two? And I'm getting more healthy. And I don't have to worry about the consequences of eating this food. Now we're on a better sort of path in terms of like having a healthier lifestyle. It's not just a diet. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. When I was on your fast, man, I think the first few days was rough. After that, like the next week, man, I was like, dang, why do I feel like I have more energy? Yeah. Like, why do I feel like I'm lighter on my feet? Yep. I was like. Because you're eating less. <laughs> yep. And then I went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why people do that? It's addiction. Yeah. You got to think any other thing we do that we would call it addiction. Absolutely. If it was coffee and we tried to stop and we knew we need to stop and then we started drinking, we would say, all right, I'm addicted to yeah, coffee. Yeah. If it was cigarettes, we would call it addiction. If it was cocaine, we would call it addiction. Yeah. But food is a socially accepted addiction. It is. Nobody will mar you about the foods that you're eating. Yeah. But what they're not telling you is that the reason why you're so addicted to the food is because they put baked addiction into the ingredients. And most of the foods that people are eating, they're not whole foods. They're yeah. foods in box, bag, cans, jars, etc. Yeah. And when you look on the label and look at what's in the food, you don't understand all of that chemistry. When you read it, you know it's chemistry. Absolutely. But you don't know what it is. Yes, sir. And most of that is to make the food stay looking a certain kind of way, color and texture. Right. Because otherwise, it will break down. Just think it. I put a tomato right here on the desk. Yes, sir. And we waited a week. Oh. You would see mold on the tomato. Absolutely. Okay. And on the desk. Right. But all of a sudden, this thing that comes out of a box, bag, can, jar, it could just sit there for two years. That's not magic. That's chemistry. And that's the chemistry that is slowly but surely taking away minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years of our life. And that's also what's Damn. making us so overweight as well, too. Damn, that's crazy because it's like... You just do one of those things, and you do another, then you do another, then you do another. That's why it'll just multiply, and that's why I'm I'm a big proponent of like, or a big advocate of working out and eating healthy to the best of your ability, so that you can enjoy life and be confident with your body image. Because a lot of that chemistry, which is really toxins, the body puts all of that chemistry in fat, and the more chemistry you put in you the more the body will hold on and create fat. Mm. Because the fat is a way that we protect ourselves away from the chemistry. Otherwise, if that chemistry was getting inside of the cells, getting inside of the tissues, we would rapidly de decline. And so as we're increasing this amount of fat, especially around the waist, which is the most dangerous fat, it's storing away all these toxins. And that's what makes it also very difficult for us to lose weight. Because as we try to burn the fat, the body knows that you're going to be releasing all these toxins into the bloodstream. It can't have that. So this is why people can work out and work out and work out and work out. And not lose any weight. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? But then when you're on the detox, what happens is not all of these elimination pathways are open. Yeah. Now your bowels are open. Yeah. Now you're having bowel movement. I sure was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're urinating. Oh, yeah. It's coming out through the skin. You may have a breakout. I had a breakout. Yeah, so you see what I'm saying? Okay, so I do have to disagree with that. I do think that bottom line, in order to lose weight, you have to be in a caloric deficit. And I think that over time, if you do like those detox things, what happens is the detox, the detox situations, like they have a lot of fiber. So most likely that's what's going to be causing your bowels to move. And on the detox, you're not going to be consuming a lot of calories, which is why you would lose weight. So I think what happens is people work out and then they don't do the nutrition piece, which makes them work out, but then maintain that same weight. And so that that's my opinion, but you know, he may have another uh, insight on that. Now all the elimination paths are open. Now it knocks on the door and says, hey, we got room to get rid of this fat. Let's get rid of this fat. So then that's why you start to burn the fat. And when you think about it, just think about it for a second. Here in the U.S., in the 1950s, 
the obese population was 5%. Yeah. Today, obese, 43%. And if we include obese and overweight, it's 75%. What? Yeah, 40 See, that's exactly what I was thinking. Dude, I was just thinking that, like, if you go somewhere, every two out of three people is going to be overweight, bro. And that's not right. It's really not. 33% obese. Overweight and obese is 75%, and it's worse in our community. So you start to understand why we're so sick and then why we're so overweight as well, too. It starts to make sense when you start to look at the fact that 67% of our diet is ultra-processed food, food that's in box bag cans and jars that we've fallen in love with, that we call, we have at our, our, our family gatherings, that we bake, we make our mac and cheese with, but there's no cheese in the mac and cheese box. And so we start to understand very quickly how all of this is tying in and how all these systems are feeding each other. A food system is making you overweight and sick. It's feeding healthcare. It's feeding the drug companies. You understand? It's making your insurance higher. All of these things are feeding a system, just like this. And it doesn't just start with you as an adult. It starts with our children. Because the vast majority of the marketing is for our children. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So they're being indoctrinated at a very early age. Which goes into helping you understand why there's so much ADHD. Yeah. When you start to think about how yellow number five and red number 40 create issues in the brain. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? When you start to think about something like monosodium glutamate that causes you to be addicted and eat so much that you don't even have any restriction or any, any inhibition to say, all right, it's time to stop eating. Wow. So this is why also I, we have childhood obesity rates through the roof. This is why we're starting to see children have early puberty. Yes, sir. Now, puberty today for a little girl, compared to what it was for somebody in the 1950s, it might have been like age 13, 14, back in 1950. In the 1800s, it was 16, 17. Facts. Today, we're seeing little girls as young as age seven wow. having breasts and starting to have a menses. So we're seeing the writing Damn. on the wall, but what happens every time is they're making something that is common normal. But just because it's common doesn't mean that it's normal. And so that that's one of the reasons why you're seeing this drug, Ozempic. Yeah, let's talk about it. Go through the roof. I'm thinking. Okay, so I like how he said we're making something common normal, and what's normal is not supposed to be common because, because of the fact that people are, like, overweight. It's, like, common. But it's not normal. It's not how it's supposed to be. Like, so, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to doing more reactions on this type of uh, these types of videos because I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how we can become healthier in years to come and achieve generational health. So, y'all comment below. Let me know what you think. All right, peace.